Freedom Convoy to U.S. military base in Turkey calls for Gaza ceasefire. The first response by Israel to the Hamas attacks of October 7 was to send in the Air Force to bomb Gaza. The Air Force was given a long list of potential targets, related to the attacks or not. The logic was to show to Israelis and Palestinians alike that Israel was not down but could muster a quick, resolute, and brutal response. Israel initially released reports of the number of airstrikes it was conducting, but probably realizing that admitting having bombed Gaza thousands of times was bad public relations, it switched instead to reporting the number of targets it was hitting. The last figure was released about a week ago claiming 12,000 targets attacked. Without the specifics of how they were hit and with what means, the number doesn't say much. But a lot can be deduced from the total number of bombs used. This week, Palestinian officials reported that 18,000 tons of bombs have been dropped on Gaza. The destruction on the ground is consistent with this figure. Almost all bombs dropped belong to the United States-designed Mc-80 family, which has been in service since the Vietnam War. Originally designed as conventional free-fall weapons or dumb bombs, they have been constantly modernized with sophisticated targeting devices that have converted them into smart bombs. These bombs are made in various sizes, classified by total weight of the weapon, 120 kg, 265 lb, 250 kg, 551 lb, 500 q, 1,102,204 lb. The Israeli Air Force uses three main types of fixed-wing aircraft, all U.S.-made. The F-15 fighter jet's main role is to secure aerial superiority, although some also can be used as bombers. Israel ordered 75 of the latest F-35 fighter bombers and has received about 40 so far. These jets are probably not being used to bomb Gaza, but they patrol the skies against any threat. This week, a video was released of an F-35 shooting down a Houthi cruise missile launched at Israel from Yemen. The workhorse of the Gaza bombing campaign is the F-16, an old and proven airplane. Israel built a modified version of the fighter jet to suit its tactics with a second crew member whose main task is to control precision weapons. About 100 are in service. Although each can carry seven tonnes for practical purposes, it can be assumed that every F-16 takes off with four bombs. If all of the four bombs were 1,000 Chi versions, 4,500 flights would be required to deliver 18,000 tons of bombs. But not all bombs used are of the heaviest type, so the number of bombing flights over Gaza might be closer to 6,000. The Air Force has about 170 F-16S of all versions. In any Air Force, about 20% of aircraft are at any time out of service for regular maintenance, upgrades, or repairs. Israel is known for professional and speedy support, so about 150 F-16S probably are usable at any time. As the campaign continues, this number will start to decrease as continuous use will require additional maintenance and replacement of parts that get worn out. But that will happen gradually, and Israel will be able to keep more than 100 F-16S in flying condition at any time. Thus, F-16S apparently fly an average of 1.5 combat missions per day. Given the specifics of the battlefield with no fewer than seven Israeli airbases within a 50 km to 100 km, 31 to 62 mile, range from Gaza, flight times are short, so pilots can sustain flying at the current rate without worrying about long-term fatigue setting in. All air forces try to have at least two, preferably three, crews per aircraft. Although exact numbers are always one of the most guarded secrets, the Israeli Air Force has enough active pilots and reservists with updated training to keep regular rotations. While Israel does not need to worry about a possible shortage of soldiers for the aerial battles, it might have to consider the logistics and finances of the bombing campaign. 600 tons of bombs per day is a considerable amount. About 30 articulated lorries are needed just to transport them. Costs are also mounting. A 1,000G bomb costs the U.S. Air Force a reported $16,000. A much smaller foreign customer like Israel would probably have to pay a higher price of $25,000 per ton. Just for the dumb version without the cost of adding the sophisticated and often much more expensive targeting electronics and hardware. 
That makes for a daily price tag of well over $15 million just for the basic bomb. With the add-ons, it's fair to assume that the figure rises to at least $25 million per day. At that rate, the bombing campaign has so far cost Israel a minimum of $750 million just in bombs. What about additional costs? The F-16 is claimed to have a very low cost in flight, only $8,000 per hour. Assuming a minimum of 300 flight hours per day gives a figure of $2.5 million per day, or $75 million so far. 600 tons of bombs per day is a considerable amount. About 30 articulated lorries are needed just to transport them.